can't take it. I have to look it up. I literally have no idea what it's supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to uh, another episode of Renegades React, and today we are going to be looking at something, honestly I can't believe it's taken this long for Doug to touch the, the Steven Seagal films. I really can't, because, okay, the amount of Arnold Schwarzenegger movies that Doug has done on here, it's unbelievable. Like, he did... All the Terminator films, which we need to get back to reacting to those. Whenever Micah comes over, we'll get back to doing those. Because I know there's a lot of you out there who've just been like, Where are those reactions? Like, just be patient. We need Micah. If we're going to do it, we need the Schwarzenegger man himself. Especially since I haven't really seen all of them myself. So. Uh, have, you seen, have you seen the third one? I can't remember. It's the one where the bomb... Bob gave something away if you hadn't seen it. Uh, okay, is it, have you seen the one where it's the the Terminator's a female coming after him? I don't think so. Okay, so you haven't seen it. So we'll we'll probably watch that as just a refresher for you. But anyway, uh, Steven Seagal is a laughing stock in a lot of circles of martial arts. It's a bit of a meme, if you will. Yes. Steven Seagal is a practitioner of Aikido, which is a fairly legitimate martial art. Except for not. Except it isn't, because in practical application... Okay, in dojos with students who are wanting to follow you, yes, it is legitimate, but... In real world scenarios with people who actually know how to fight, it's about as useful as, you know, holding up a sheet of paper in front of you and saying, This is impregnable. You cannot get through. See, here's the thing is, I completely fell for it and I thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever oh, seen. No. And. I even was misinformed. I was told that that was the kind of martial arts that Spike Spiegel did. No. Bebop, Spike does Jeet Kune Do. Yeah, exactly. The Art of the Intercepting which Fist, I which is done by Bruce later, Lee. But I saw a workshop on Aikido at an anime convention. They had one set up at the convention like, and had people doing it. And I was like, that's so cool. And I was like, look how they like, you know, can turn a gun on somebody that has it pointed at them and stuff like that. Then I started watching actual legitimate martial artists and self-defense technicians like Bass Rutan and stuff like that. Yes. And I realized what was happening. And come to find out, Aikido is essentially the pyramid scheme of martial arts. It's, yeah, a lot of ways. And certain forms of karate as well. I hate to shit on certain karate practitioners, but there are certain brands of karate, quote-unquote karate, out there that... In practical use, you are going to get rolled by someone who knows what the fuck they're doing. And I and look, if you dedicated yourself to the other to thing it, about Aikido, by the ahead. way, is it was supposed to be essentially a counter based martial art that would counter all other martial arts. There's no such thing. Good luck with that. Yeah. The only thing that you get that, that you can do to try and like do something against these martial arts is find other martial arts and hybridize and adapt those techniques in in order to in order to like make a difference that's what that's what jeet kendo is by jeet the Kendo's, way go ahead if you're still in the same situation i was and you don't believe what i'm saying right now what nate's saying right now and you're like no keto's real to it it's, it's it's so i know people that have done and like if you're not believing us Ask yourself this question. Why does not a single person in the mixed martial arts professional sphere use Aikido? If it's that good and it works that well, why does no one use it? That's that's always been my thing. And Boss Rutan was on Joe Rogan's podcast and said the same thing. And then there was someone who commented and be like, 
Well, they can't use it because it's too dangerous. It's too effective. It's like... No, it's not. It's literally... Uh, it's literally pitched on not being dangerous. It's pitched on being a form of martial arts that doesn't inflict bodily damage to the attacker. Yeah. Which, like, they want to say it's banned because, like, it can counter everything there is. Except like, it can't. But it can't. It, people don't use it because it's not going to do anything. You know, you know, I love the... There's this one guy, he's been going around challenging, like... Like ten thousand, fifty thousand dollar challenges to these old school martial arts instructors, you know, the ones who, you know, have the schools and the students who just like give in and to the bullshit and everything. And he goes up to them and says, I will fight you. I will fight you and you know, I will give you fifty thousand dollars if you answer my challenge. And it's like they answer the challenge, it's like, okay, you have, we have to fight now, and if you win you get another $50,000. And this guy goes in there with legitimate mixed martial arts techniques. You know, leg kicks, like traditional boxing, like, and then of course wrestling, jujitsu, like the legit stuff that worked Muay Thai. This guy, he goes in there against these guys and he destroys them every single time. The hybridization of martial arts is what leads to true mixed martial arts because Every technique or every style can benefit out there. Like, Man, there's not like a singular style that by itself is like the number one thing. No, because there are some wrestlers out there I've seen absolutely destroy Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioners. But then there are some Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioners who practice, who, who like are of a different level. And then they go in there against the wrestlers. They tie the wrestlers up and they make them submit within 30 seconds. It, and then, of course, boxers. I've seen traditional boxers get destroyed by, by like, Dutch kickboxing. And then, of course, Muay Thai, forget about it, dude. You're going to go shin to shin against a 30-year practitioner of Muay Thai? Good luck. Your shins are going to explode because these people have been conditioning themselves to basically have, like, bludgeons for legs. And honestly... Legit martial arts, like, yeah, you're si you're here listening to two fat asses in a basement <laughs> talk about martial arts like we know what we're talking about. Here's the thing. I don't pretend like I'm a martial arts practitioner and I know what the fuck I'm doing. So why the fuck are you wanting to believe some fat fuck who wants to act like, oh, I'm one of the most legitimate martial artists of all time. I'm also a blues musician. I'm also a cop. I'm also an actor. And I'm also, you know, uh, a Mongolian Jewish... Uh, Chinese, Japanese. I, the man can't make up his mind what the hell he is. Jesus Christ. Yeah, basically, the whole reason I am fat and I don't actually practice martial arts is because I'm skeptical of a lot of it and I never have found a legitimate place to practice it around here. Well... While also being able to afford the, like, instruction. That's... Well, that's fair. Um, we were getting some with, like, boxing from Jacob whenever we lived together. But that was very limited. Yeah, he's not a professional <clears throat> instructor either. Yeah, well, but he's but he at least can teach you the basics. He he can at least teach you the basics of like of like combinations and like you know keep your hands up. Like if you leave your arm hanging out there too long, he'll like pop you in the side of the head. And be like keep your hands up. And for me, I did kickboxing whenever I was in college. Um, I did it for like four years, but before that, I did like seven years of gymnastics and I got really strong legs and uh, I I mean the punching bag out there I put several holes in it from kicking it so hard but not only that but I kicked it so hard like Nick's, Nick was there when I did it I kicked it and I literally moved the, the bag and the stand like ten feet across the room just for me kicking it I got, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I'm Billy badass, but I at least, to a certain extent, know how to handle myself. But anyway, Steven Seagal, ladies and gentlemen, the nostalgia critic is finally starting to do Steven Seagal films. Please do Hard to Kill, please. It has easily some of the most hilarious shit in it that I. Oh dear, oh dear God. Anyway, here we go. This episode brought to you by Rocket Money the personal finance app that helps lower your bills. Also brought to you by Chime. The award-winning app and debit card that can save you money today. 
Duck! Remember when we did like a video game intro like that? Cool. Remember when we did a video game intro like this one time? For like whenever Chad was like uh, doing one of his uh, uh, video gaming videos back in the day? And you put on the mask and you like blew vape, like a vape cloud through the mask. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I actually put that out and uh, it was actually, it, uh, all, it was all fun and games. I can't remember the name of it, but I just remember working my ass off on, on those graphics. Uh, like doing the selector, I had Nikki. She had she had roller skates on, and I had like two like two batons. You had a crowbar and the mask, and then there was me. I had my big old afro with like the the bandana and the and the sword. Oh gosh, that was fun. Did you hear that too? Like the clicking sound? Yeah, was that you or was that... I know what that was. What? We're going to smell it here eventually. Did he fall? I think he did. I think Asher just dropped a carpet bomb on us. Hopefully not. We'll find out here soon. Activity are we doing that'll tie into today's review? We're playing the Expendable Expendables. Oh, like the Stallone movies with the action stars? No, like the action stars that the Stallone movies were too embarrassed to put in. Yeah. I choose Chris Klein. Oh! Yeah. Well, I choose Dennis Rotman. Oh! Oh! Well, I'm bringing the pain of Charlie Sheen and Emilio Estevez. Oh! Yeah. Oh, this looks like fun. You do me in? Sure, grab a few cars. Alrighty. Michael Dukakis. Oh. Got y'all now. I summon late 90s Ben Affleck! Ha! I have early 2000s Ben Affleck! Ooh. That's nothing. I've got Joss Whedon Ben Affleck! <sighs> My friends, this is all for naught. For this game is over. Oh! oh man, yep. you win. Yeah, there's no way we're beating that. Yeah, there's so many duds he's been in, like... All of them. Like... Hard to kill. Have you seriously never reviewed Under a Siege? Steven Seagal movie? I don't think I have. <laughs> oh, even, even he's realizing the ridiculousness of this whole situation. Yeah. He's like, I, I, I have it. What? What? I'm doing this job, man. He's the most famously bad action star there is. Hey, I saw Under Siege and Executive Decision, but only because he died in the first 10 minutes. Of course. <laughs> yeah, executive decision. A lot of people expected him to be like the main action star. I was so glad when he wasn't. Thank God. And then of course, Under Siege. I would say Under Siege is probably my favorite Steven Seagal movie. Mostly because of Tommy Lee Jones. And also mostly because it it's not it actually is a cohesive story. But also, Eric Elaniac shows her tits in that. Very nice, by the way. Everybody's watched that scene on repeat. Okay, but you've never seen any other Seagal movie, though. I guess not. What's a good one to check out? You have a collection? <laughs> oh, no. Hard to Kill is easily one of his worst ones. Ah, damn. Oh, that does it. <laughs> what? Just the flash. Like I was like, well, that does it. Oh no! Come on, Demon yeah. Core. Slotnik, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Friggin' hell, the Demon Core incident. For those of you who don't know what we're talking about, look it up. Like Henry Slotnik and the and the Demon Core incident. Kyle Hill, Kyle Hill has a very good explanation of it. Yeah. It is time. <laughs> Okay, y'all need to get laid. Oh. Probably. <laughs> I know what I do. Look who's talking. Oh. Huh? Said so I know what I do. Oh. 
He just made himself sad. It's all right, Nick. It's all right. He might have a point, though. This is kind of weird. Maybe. Should we just have a threesome right now? Sure. Jesus Christ. Steven Seagal has become one of action's biggest punchlines, if not the biggest punchline. While other action stars like Schwarzenegger and Stallone have certainly made duds, but have a good sense of humor about it, people love laughing at Seagal because he seems incapable of laughing at himself. And the film claimed to be the crowning achievement of taking himself so seriously it becomes hilarious is on Deadly Ground. Released in 1994. And hard to you please, Doug, you have to do hard to kill. The man, it, it's literally some of, like, the worst comedy, the worst action. The, okay, for instance, these people are breaking into this house, and they're trying to kill him. They're not trying to take him prisoner. They are trying to kill him. Like, dead. Like, literally, kill him dead. There is a section, like, I kid you not, a guy runs up behind him, grabs him on the shoulder, has a knife in this hand, and stands there for a solid second before Steven Seagal turns around, knocks the knife out of the guy's hand, and breaks his arm. I'm like... <laughs> what? It's like, that's horrible fight choreography. It's like, I'm like, sorry. If alive, he would have been full of holes. Oh, dude, knife in neck. Like, I wouldn't even walked up and grabbed him. I would have just walked up and... Alright, guys, I killed him. We can go home now. Thank God, he killed so many of us. <laughs> I would have assumed his most embarrassing work would be sometime after he became Jim Belushi microwaving into Elvis. <sighs> but everyone says this is his passion project and directorial debut, encompassing everything that's hilarious about him I without ever attempting this. to be humorous. It's entered the halls of laugh out loud infamy, and I'm finally gonna see what's so damn funny about it. Oh, Jesus. So let's take a look at. Hey, critic, do you have any edible lubricant? No. And for God's sakes, keep your panties on. Oh, these aren't mine. Oh. Let's take a look at On Deadly Ground. My bet's on Malcolm. Opens with. Ego! I can already tell this is gonna be too subtle for me. And then cuts to a fire on an oil rig, where we see Seagal coming in to save the what is that jacket. <laughs> oh my god, he looks like what Doc dressed Marty in to go back in time. Is this what you wear the whole film? Yes. Huh, looks like it. In the neighborhood, oh, I'm eh? all on board for this garbage. Good to know the guy who's gonna save everybody smokes a cigarette in an open oil fire. Cigar, hey, you, what's cooking? God damn it, Forrest, this is a disaster here. Aren't you already in love with this movie? Just the way they said those first two lines. Michael Caine plays Jennings, no, the owner of the oil I company. Am. No. Also, uh, Michael Caine. Master Wayne. Master Wayne. Don't look up my embarrassing filmography. I was in a Steven Seagal film. I was young and stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, you got John C. McGinley, who is one of my favorite, like, crazy like crazy actors you know those actors that you look to to like play a crazy guy he's one of them i love john c mcginley and then of course uh, uh I, for, I forget i forget his name olin i believe it is or Oren. uh this guy is arnold's lifting buddy arnold schwarzenegger these two like these two lifted together forever and uh I think it's Olin. I can't. Re I can't remember. It's gonna kill me. The fact I can't remember his name, but he always plays a good, like, big muscular bad guy, because the guy's huge. The guy's a mammoth. Hey, that's literally on fire. And I know it's gonna be hard to believe, but he might actually be funnier than Seagal in this. First off, my God, what accent is that? I'll expect your full report on my desk by morning. My oil is flowing all over the ocean instead of into my refinery where it's worth money. It's a small oil spill. Accidents happen. At first I thought it was his usual British accent, but it's, it's so hooks. bad, I literally can't even guess what it's supposed to be. He sounds like a British Midwestern huckster. Literally, he sounds like he sounds like he was born in England, raised in Kansas City, and got lost in the middle and got lost in the friggin' Rockies and wound up in Wyoming. And then for some reason visited Texas and got a bolo tie. 
Monero all the way. I suggest you take care of the Hugh Palmer problem first, Mr. Magruder. What's the position on Aegis One? Maybe that's his idea of what a New England accent is supposed to sound like? Every year, hundreds of thousands of porcupine caribou make their way down from the Ogilvy Mountains. They come to feed off the tundra grasses. I can't take it. I have to look it up. I literally have no idea what it's supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that! <laughs> oh, that is so awful! Oh my god! I like that it's listed in an article called What is the most what is the worst movie accent of all time? <laughs> I'm sorry, it sounds like the balloon deflating. <laughs> <laughs> also, Doug's face. He's very happy to learn this fact. <laughs> He's just like, this is the greatest decision I've ever made to review this film. It is. Look at it. This has just made my entire year. Look at it. <laughs> Good thing, too, because the year has only begun. Yeah, I know. It was like 2024 is best year. Exactly. <laughs> Give this movie everything. Everything. All the awards. All the world's money. We need more of this in our lives. <laughs> Second, I don't know if it's the makeup or the lighting, but he looks like a Mission Impossible mask. It doesn't help either that hair is back and forth from being as black as the oil he owns and then a weird inconsistency of red and brown that I think I've only seen on Norman Osborn in Spider-Man comics. Oh my god, oh, he's on, right. Stop. Surely you can be sillier than Kane in some way. What's your character's name? I'm telling you, Forrest. Those goddamn preventers caused this. That's some good silly. That's some good silly. But the son bitch made me use them anyway. The raccoon's trying to get on our back porch. Mom just chase him off with a broom. <laughs> Why don't you fall back, you, before you say something stupid? What everybody told Sakal before he agreed to direct. <laughs> I'm just like Jesus, but cooler. I walk on fire. He's so badass, he doesn't even need to walk away from the explosion. He lets the explosion walk around him. Because Steven Seagal doesn't catch fire, fire catches Steven Seagal. Oh my god, I haven't seen that in so long! The Chuck... I cannot believe he brought back the Chuck Norris joke. It, this is way before your time watching, Doug. Like, every time Steven, like, they would mention something ridiculous, it's like, I know someone who would survive that fall. Chuck Norris. A Chuck Norris! And then that would pop up. I can't believe, like, he brought it back and put St Seagal over top of it. His co-worker Hugh thinks Jennings is purposefully setting his rigs on fire, but Forrest Taft? Yes, it's a name that just gets funnier the more you reveal. I think his middle name is the Thundercats logo. <laughs> Doesn't see why he would do that. Now why the hell would I do that to myself on purpose? I don't know, I kinda asked him the same thing. I guess you did. He looks like Mrs. Doubtfire's face on a mannequin head. How am I taking his role crying over a green sock more seriously? <laughs> Forrest relaxes in a local bar where he notices a Native American man being picked on by some bullies. Red skin piece of shit. Uh, another one of those bars that seems to have no owner. Oh, oh hey Jim, I haven't seen you since Dumb and Dumber. Don't you think you should change out that ridiculous costume though? You wanna play with me? Oh, you want a piece of this? I am afraid I'm fucking killing. I'm gonna imagine you're Will Sasso. He's got a cowboy rope, everybody, and he clearly doesn't know how to use it. What, are you gonna lasso someone with a gun next? What kind of moves are these? Whatever moves they are, they call for slow-mo, clearly not originally shot in slow-mo. And you can see why now these moves are worth showing in slow-mo. Are you a man? Come on, man. I got a big pair of balls right between my legs. Let's settle this like men, with a hand-slapping game. Tough guy. Don't, you think I'm joking? Don't hurt him, Forrest. <laughs> Sorry, when did this become a Hot Shots movie? <laughs> Next, we'll do rock, paper, scissors, then patty cake. Wait, how do you lose patty cake? Like this. <laughs> that is hot. Patty cake, patty cake, baker's bear! Art, he's a therapist. What does it take to change the essence of a man? I need time to change. Now you might.
might be thinking, Surely I edited that down. He must have said more than that to break through. No. But nope. All he says is, what does it take to change the essence of a man? And the guy's like, well, oh, I've been bad. I need time to change. And maybe a few games on tiddlywinks. These recess activities really speak to my soul. And as if this scene couldn't get any more hilarious, look at how they end it. Thank you, my brother. We're about to go on a sacred journey. This journey will be good for all people. But you must be careful. Right. Was that really given to us as poorly as that was given to us? I think that was supposed to be like cryptic foreshadowing, but between the nonchalant way it's shot, the music drowning out what he's saying, and Seagal's complete lack of giving a shit, it comes across like he says this to everyone. Hey you, you know where the bathroom is? Down the hall, to the left. You're about to go on a sacred journey. This journey will be good for all people, but you must be careful. Wow, I didn't know my turds were so important. How do you make yourself feel better about being a director? Direct a good director to direct bad. Oh my Push god! Start. What? What? Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who do not know who Irving Kirshner is, the man directed Empire Strikes Back. Ar arguably the best Star Wars film. Oh, the pain. Oh, man. With an out-of-focus world, we pull back, and then the whole pristine forest. All I know is whenever I have snow in something, it always, most of the time, works. Oh, that's right. The Earth is our home, too. Who cares? We do. He looks like a de-aging effect that somehow made him older. <laughs> Fuck these animals, stink. Bring me a washcloth. We'll do it live. Oh, wait, I forgot me Texas accent. We're doing live! Why is this so hard for you to understand? Get out! Get out! Ages one is gonna be the biggest rigger in refinery. You're really gonna finish this serious scene like that? And we lose all our rights. This is a bad reaction on my part because this movie's just leaving me speechless. So I don't know what to fucking say, man. <laughs> I knew there was a reason that I've never really watched Seagal films. Never really thought too hard about what it was. I'm so sorry. I'm just But uh <laughs> Clearly I wasn't wrong. Uh, I I'm sorry. But this... <laughs> oh, God. I always wonder what Michael Caine had to do to get out of his... to get out of a bad contract deal. Worth billions of dollars a week. Okay. Not like I was taking any of this seriously anyway. If you want to look like you gave a messy blowjob to Stay Puft, that's... God like damn it, Doug! I was trying to stay away from that. But he just went into it. To you. His friend Hugh, who just looks like a guy who's gonna be in this movie for a while, doesn't he? Discovers Jennings is setting the fires for financial gain and puts the proof on a disc. Because in the 90s, every MacGuffin was a disc. Really? Jennings found out yep. he well, found out and sends his top thugs to take care of it. Oh, good, the guy who played Dr. Cox. This will finally add some subtlety. We've just come by to offer you a ride at Mr. Jennings' press conference. We like to talk to you over a few bullets. Sure. Gotcha there. I honestly don't want to have to ask you ten times. Have you listened to yourself lately? Have you? Okay, I know you're supposed to be intimidating, but why are you acting like he just broke up with you? Everything with you is I, I, I. There is no I in team. It is T-E-A-M. Team. There is an M-E. I wonder if Seagal's behind the camera just being like, wait, I thought it was, I thought it was spelled T-E-E-M. Shit. I really need to I really need to work on my I really need to work on my spelling. E though, and that's what our relationship should be about. Me! Our hero also starts to put together the obvious bad guys or obvious bad guys, and he gets appropriately blown up at an oil rig. What is this? Arctic Iron Man? He actually looks better after he got blown up. <laughs> Oh good, with his amazing understanding of Native Americans, I hope he does a crossover with Kathy Bates from North. Uh. Welcome to Chucky e. Crows! I hear someone has a star birthday today!
I only make fun because I know a better movie would represent this as, well, a better movie. My name is Forrest. Forrest Gump. <laughs> Joan Chen plays Masu, the chief's daughter, as she translates what they're saying. <laughs> and he's just like, he's like, I too speak. He's like, he's like, I'm sorry, I don't speak your language. It's so beautiful. He's like, idiot doesn't realize when he's being insulted. Huh? Unahook, Forest Ahook. That's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, that's just. <laughs> it's like White Fang, too. The chief. God. Okay. I understand that in some ways casting American Indian, Native American actors, Inuit, First Nations, it can be difficult sometimes because of the fact that there aren't that many left. But they really went with the Chinese lady and said close enough. Yeah, not only that, but, uh, okay, White Fang 2, uh, only thing that, uh, I would say it's just as good as the first one, only thing it's missing is Ethan Hawke. That being said, the chief of that film is played by, <laughs> is played by someone who is Maori, you know, like, like, Pacific Islander from New Zealand. Jesus Christ. Like, what is with the casting, dude? He's in fact the best way he knows how. By stealing their shit. If you're healthy enough to steal, you're healthy enough to make your journey. I'm in trouble, people are after me, and if they come here, you guys are in a lot of danger. Ah, the traditional Seagal approach of making the bad thing he's doing look like a good thing. <sighs> but unlike everywhere else, it seems to work here. There was a time there were no people on the earth. A man burst forth from this sacred place. I'll give the film this. Alaska does look pretty. Alaska is I've beautiful. I've seen a lot of ego projects that don't even attempt to give their film a visual style, so I will give it a point for that. But then that pesky story comes back as the chief tells Forrest about a sacred man who is a spirit warrior who learns the way of nature and brings balance. Can you guess who that's going to be? You will fight your most difficult battle. Then you will find your way back. He goes on a spiritual journey that clearly he thinks is artsy enough to show nudity. Well, good thing I like gilfs. Grandmas, I like to fuck Thank you, boob lady! The henchmen from before show up, and by God, does he get any info from anyone when he acts like such a jilted teenager? Have you seen this man? God damn it! Does he have a clothespin on his balls? Why is he always so angry? Force comes back to discover what happened to the man who saved him. Boom. Oh, yeah, I mean. <laughs> he says, you're the spirit warrior. <laughs> oh no! A subscription I'm not using! <clears throat> Darn you subscription, you piece of poop! Why did I sign up for that app that shows other people signing up for an app? It's just wasting money and I forgot about it. But I tried to cancel it, but the only way to do it is calling their customer service, and that takes like forever. I mean, they actually say you'll be on hold forever. Like, that's not, I'm not gonna talk to someone that way. But Rocket Money was able to take care of it for me easily. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. I can see all of my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, I cancel it with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. What's this guy doing with his hand? I'm asking questions I don't want to ask. Save me, Rocket Money! <laughs> I even tried to get you a refund for the last couple months of wasted money and negotiate to lower bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. What's this guy? What's he wearing? Is he in purgatory? Where is this? Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com nostalgia. That's rocketmoney.com nostalgia.
Go to rocketmoney.com slash nostalgia to get started today. Oh, it's a woman now. Like, that's somehow going to make the scenario make more sense. What the hell is going on? What? Is that her brain? What the hell am I watching? A chime. I don't have a segue. It just freaked me out too much. But you know what? He's <laughs> like, fuck a segue, dude. This is bullshit. Chime's online checking account, you can enjoy a lot of free perks, like fee-free overdrafts up to $200. You can even get paid two days early with direct deposit. What's this idiot laughing at? Ditch the monthly fees. Chime has no monthly minimum balance or overdraft fees. You can access over 60,000 fee-free ATMs. That's more than the top three national banks combined. Easily find one near you with the Chime app. Stop moving that way, lady. You're at work. People are looking at you. Send and receive money. <laughs> Pay friends through Chime, Chime member or not, and cash out your money fee-free. Signing up for Chime takes minutes. So join the millions of other Chime members and sign up today. Get started at Chime.com slash nostalgia. That's Chime.com slash nostalgia. That's a house! Here's the mandatory stuff. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bancor Bank, NA or Stripe Bank, NA members, FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. Tooth! Why? <laughs> Tooth! They clearly just gave him like a package of stuff he could work with to make the commercial and he just decided to make fun of all of it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, he's like... It, oh, oh. What? <laughs> why is there a tooth? Why is that house walking towards me? And why is it smiling? Masood decides to join Forrest <clears> on <throat> his quest as they make their way to his home, but the bad guys spot them. <laughs> that was a lucky shot. Also kind of brutal. Uh, hold on. Also, you can clearly see the squibs, like mm -hmm. you can clearly see the box there. I just, oh, oh, and like right there too on his legs. Mm -hmm. Damn it! I accidentally muted it. Shot! Ah, my balls, my big balls between my legs! <laughs> he of course takes them all out, which means Jennings starts outsourcing to a mercenary played by R. Lee Irving. Mr. Jennings, I'm stoned. Only two people come out of Texas, steers and people with bizarre British accents. How do you want him delivered? On deadly ground. Boom. Forrest gets ready to take out Jennings, but, you know, he really doesn't want to. I didn't want to resort to violence. I don't have a choice. You don't want to resort to violence? You literally played the hand slap game where the prize is punching someone. Yes, it may... It, it, Your character is bad, and you should feel bad. <laughs> you right, good? Of course, I'm a Native American. I mean, that doesn't mean shit because I hate to say it, but horses originally were not here for the people of the first, you know, the American Indians and the First Nations to take advantage of. It wasn't until after Europeans moved here that horses became part of the, like, part of the uh uh brain why aren't you working your horses not. aren't native to north america no i didn't know that yeah they're originally native to uh like to like uh you know southeastern or like to like turkey and southeastern europe all the way over to like the steppe which is like where the mongolians and the Chinese and the Manchurians were. Yeah, and it's what, because there's just a whole lot of media that depicts like Native Americans riding on horses. And it's and yeah, and it's because the horses brought over here. You know, the native a lot of natives, uh, you know, took care of them and uh, did good, did a good job like raising them and all that. But at the same time, it's like the tie to horses and a. Amer you know, American Indian or First Nations culture only goes so far back before the intervention of Europeans in the uh, in like this nation's uh, in this nation's development. But more than Seagal will ever be wearing that Arizona Walmart collection. Yeah, I love her as much as he complains we don't understand Native Americans. He doesn't even cast them in the main roles. 
They make their way to a hideout where he has all sorts of- I guarantee you the main reason why they couldn't get an American Indian woman to play her character is because they wouldn't agree to do a nude scene. And she did. I guarantee you that's why. Could be. The hidden weapons that, like he said, he hoped he would never have to resort to. Or it could have case. been because they found <laughs> Steven Seagal's choice of script and clothing to be offensive. Probably. In case they declare war on some small country. Yeah. This would be like Mr. Miyagi saying he hates fighting, but he has a nuclear warhead under his workbench. Kind of mixed messages. Yeah. The mercenaries do attack, but thankfully the forest <coughs> home alone's the entire forest. <laughs> On that note, don't you wish Home Alone had just as good editing? Heads up! He's only a kid, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That looks so real. Quick, get me a paintbrush. We'll paint our way across. Right after I paint a tunnel on a cave. That's the direction a lot of this is going. Confirmed. He blew a hole in the hole. They make their way to the latest rig. Jennings is about to sabotage and try to stop the henchmen inside. I had to kill you. Sure, I could have knocked you out, but last resort. A big thank you to Pepsi for sponsoring this last resort. I'll be back. Gotta take a piss. It was cooler when I smoked around explosives like an idiot. Who are you calling? Just gonna reach out and touch somebody. That age great. Oof. Yep. Oh, and in case anyone missed, Seagal also directed this movie. He's the kind of guy that would drink a gallon of gasoline so he could piss in your campfire. We are not dealing with a student here. We're dealing with a professor. This guy's a professional. If he reaches this rig, we're all gonna be in a big goddamn hole right in the middle of Alaska. Oh, sorry, my hard on hit one of the barrels here. <laughs> <laughs> and hearing Arlie, er I guarantee you, Arlie Ermey was paid to say this, and then afterwards he's just like, Good God, this guy has an ego the size of Texas. He raiders for the Lost Arts, Dr. Cox, and continue. Quite, uh, quite shittily, by the way, because. Yeah. Like, right there. Where's, like... The... Yeah. That's like, oh damn, dude. You got paint all over the side of the... All over the side of the landing strip. Starts Dr. Cox and continues to take out the henchmen, including Billy Bob Thornton. Open wide, sweetheart. I'll regret everything in between Bat Santa and Fargo! <laughs> but how is he gonna take out Arlie Ermey in both the coolest and lamest way possible? Well, I've never been so manly emasculated. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Yes. My God, slow mo shots that were originally shot in slow mo. Did someone actually plan something in this? You're a macho man with a coat of honor. You won't shoot me in the back. I guess he does know how to use a lasso. That scene before, that was just a tease. Now it's full on Twinkie the Kid time. <laughs> He had been practicing on set every day since shooting that first lasso scene so he could actually use it correctly. He's like, look, I learned how to use a lasso. Do you want to go back and uh, shoot the previous scene with no, the lassos? No, okay. I don't do reshoots. Okay. All right, then. Get ready for the one good line in the movie. Shoot me, God! I wouldn't dirty my bullets. It's a little second grade, but I kind of love yeah. it. But he won't kill him. He's not that kind of... All right, I guess he is. Last resort! This is for my father. Come on. This way? Okay, maybe this way. <laughs> they get out of the rig before it blows, so the way to stop rigs from blowing up is to... Blow them up. Us, as Forrest makes a big speech at the Alaskan State Capitol. I've been asked by Mr. Etok and the Tribal Council to speak thank you to all the brothers and sisters that have come here today representing this cause. Yes, I chose this jacket knowing full well you would all be here. Big business is primarily responsible for destroying the water we drink, the air we breathe, and the food we eat. He makes a big speech about how oil is bad that feels more like a G.I. Joe PSA than the end of a cinematic narrative. Because of the oil cartels and corrupt government regulation, we and the rest of the world have been forced to use gasoline for over a hundred years. True, we use God. 
knows how much oil and gas for the explosions in this movie, but when Sokol does it, it isn't wrong. Millions and millions of gallons of oil are now destroying the ocean and the many forms of life it supports. So get this, in the test screening of this film, this original speech was 11 minutes long. Jesus. Oh my God. Does the man's ego couldn't get any more inflated. But people apparently started walking out because they were so bored and I'm honestly surprised it took him that long. So he chopped it down to four minutes. Don't worry though, it still feels like 11 minutes. As long as there's profit to be made from the polluting of our earth, companies and individuals will continue to do what they want. Well, that just makes too much sense from a guy who's friends with a tyrant whose number one export is oil. This. Mm -hmm. Isn't that just the most hilarious thing about it? This Jesus awful. Christ. But man, everybody's right. It's awful in all the best ways. I'm so glad this was my intro to bad Steven Seagal and that it's a project he had complete control over. I guess it's the only film he's ever directed, but man, I got to see more. This is the kind of laugh out loud ego trip bad that you gotta see to believe. It's absolutely horrendous, but by God, I loved every minute of it. It's spectacularly awful and awfully spectacular. Enough that I think I can return to that game. <laughs> have you achieved satisfaction? Oh God, yes. So have we. Yeah, I don't need to know. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Malcolm just like staring right at us through the camera. Mm -hmm. Just be like, just be like, I got my penis sucked on. Who did it? That's for you to imagine. <laughs> Let's just keep playing. Alrighty. Ha! I choose Pamela Anderson. Well, I choose Guy from Speed Two. Well, I choose Jay Leno. Wait, that was a thing? I wish it wasn't. <laughs> you must fix with Jay Leno. Nice try, everyone. But like before, this game is officially over. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. About, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that movie was terrible. Should have stopped it, too. Checks. I'm surprised you didn't pull out a Michael Dukakis card. That guy has been in so many shitty action movies. It's hilarious. Thank you, my brother. We're about to go on a sacred journey. Uh, okay. So, Steven Seagal, everybody. Ugh. How the brain, how I wish my brain could just turn off and not have to know that Steven Seagal has made a multitude of films. Pretty sure mine did turn off. That happens. I wish mine could, but I don't know. I think it's impossible for me to turn it off. All right. I'm, we're going to get out of here. Hopefully everybody enjoyed, and hopefully we'll see you all in the next one. But for right now, I'm Nate. Doug, may God have mercy on you if you continue to do more Steven Seagal films. Till then, everybody. Peace.